The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Fourth chapter, text number 6 through 10. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on January 6, 1969, in Los Angeles. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice or descendants of Bharata, and the predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. Hmm. This is very important, right? Jadadarahi dharma sadhjani bhavati bharata abhutthana vadharma sad sadatmanam sriyama when God comes or His representative comes, His servant comes or His son comes, there is necessity because it is God's kingdom. As soon as there is too much violation of the laws of God, there will be appearance of God. So. In the present age, uh, this Harinam, Krishna, uh, Krishna has descended at the present moment in the incarnation of His holy name, Kolikale Nam Rupe. Uh, in other ages, God comes to kill the demons. But if God takes the killing process, of course at last when Kalki incarnation will come, that is of course long, long after. But at the present moment, God is compassionate, taking consideration of the people's most fallen condition there is no process of killing, but reclaiming them simply by this chanting process. Uh, we should take it seriously that this movement, Krishna consciousness movement, is also incarnation of God. In the simple form, holy name, and people may take advantage simply by chanting. Uh, go on the first part. The word Sri Dhami manifests the significant herein. Sri Dhami cannot be used in the sense of creation because according to the previous verse, there is no creation of the Lord's form or body since all the forms are eternally existent. Therefore, Sri Dhami means that the Lord manifests Himself as He is. Although the Lord appears on the schedule, namely at the end of the Dwapara Yuga, of the 28th millennium of the 8th month, in one day of Brahma, still He has no obligation to adhere to such rules and regulations, because He is completely free to act in any ways at His will. He therefore appears by His own will whenever there is a predominance of irreligion and a disappearance of true religion. Principles of religion are laid down in the Vedas, and any discrepancy in the matter of properly executing the rules of the Vedas makes one irreligious. In the Bhagavatam, we find that such principles of religion are the laws of the Lord. Only the Lord can manufacture... Yes, here is a reference of Bhagavatam. The, in the Bhagavatam, it is said, uh, dharman to shakshad bhavavat prani. The religion uh, is the, uh, um, I mean, say, order or regulation given by God. Just like the state gives you some regulation. The same example, the keep to the right. This regulation is given by the state. You cannot give such regulation. You cannot say, the no, why keep to the left, keep to the right, let me keep to the left, I give this law. Your law 
will not be accepted. The state laws will be accepted. Similarly, nobody can manufacture a religious process. That is nonsense. If somebody says that I am introducing this religious process, that is nonsense. Uh, nobody will be interested. But if God gives you law, just like the state gives you law, one has to accept. So religion means to accept the order of God. That is religion. And who can accept the order of law? A God. When there is exactly a relationship, just like you have got relationship with the state, you are a citizen of American government. So you, out of love of your country, uh, out of your obligation, you abide by the law. Similarly, religious, religion can be performed by a person who has full conception of God. Without God, religion is a force. That is not religion. Religion means you must have obligation to God, you must have clear conception of God. That is God. That is, and that relationship is based on love. Just like father and child. What is the relationship between the child? There are hundreds of thousands of children in the street. Why you are interested with your own, own children? Because there is love. Similarly, religion means love of God. And irreligion means forgetfulness of God. That's it. Religion does not mean to follow some ritualistic process. That helps us to approach, but they are not, I am to say, prime and necessary. That Ritualistic process may be different. Hindus may be following a different kind of ritualistic process. The Christian may be following a different kind of ritualistic process. That does not matter. Just like a, the same example, your relationship with the state. You Americans, you follow the state laws, keep the car right, keep right. In India and in England I've seen also, a key to the left. Ah. So the process may be different, but the actual obedience to the state is there, either in India or in America or in England or everywhere. Similarly, religion means love of God. Now that love of God, you may learn under certain process, I may learn under certain process, uh, just like uh, love between boys and girls may be different from India to America. Uh, in India there is still uh, no young man can uh, mix freely with the young girl. But still there is love. Uh, so process may be different, but we have to accept the basic principle. Basic principle is love of God. That is religion. Uh, uh, don't bother about the ritualistic process. Just try to see how much you are increasing your love of God. Then you are religious. That's all. That is Bhagavad Gita. Srimad Bhagavad says, Savai Pungsa Parodharma Jato Bhakti Radhukhaji. That is first class religion. What is that? Where love of God is enthused, there is first class. Uh, and if you follow the ritualistic processes and your love of Godhead is gone to hell, your love of materialistic life and love of this world is increasing. Love of sense gratification is increasing. That is not religion. That is not religion. Church of religion is how much you are increasing your love of God. So, 
Here it is said, whenever and wherever there is decline in religion practice. What is the religion practice? The religion practice is whenever there is decline of love of God. That's all. When people become lover of mammon, matter, that means decline of religion. And when people increase love of Godhead, that means real religion. So Krishna comes, or Krishna's uh, servant or representative comes, to address things. When people forget love of Godhead, or somebody, either Krishna, God himself, or his presence comes to address things. So this Krishna consciousness movement is Incarnation, that teaching love of God. Uh, we are not teaching some ritualistic process that you become Hindu, you become Christian, you become Mohammedan. We are simply teaching you try to love God. You have forgotten love, you have declared God is dead, these are all nonsense. God is there, you are here, you are suffering. Because you have forgotten God, you try to love God, your normal life will come back, you will be happy. This is Krishna concept. Uh, there is nothing artificial. Uh, so there is no question of sectarian. That in this temple, the, the Christians uh, will come or the Mohammedans will not come. Anyone. Because we are teaching what? teaching love of God. Either you become Christian or Mahavidana, Hindu, how you can deny God? Those who are denying God, they, their uh, case is different. But one who is act, accepting God as the central figure in the religion, how they can deny this movement? Because you are teaching love of God. That's all. Yeah. Only the Lord can manufacture a system of religion. The Vedas are also accepted as originally spoken by the Lord Himself, the Brahma, from within His heart. <coughs> Therefore, the principles of religion are the direct order of the Supreme Personality of God. These principles are clearly indicated throughout the Bhagavad Gita. The purpose of the Vedas is to establish such principles under the order of the Supreme Lord, and the Lord directly orders at the end of the Bhagavad Gita that the highest principle of religion is to surrender unto him only, and nothing more. The Vedic principles are to push one toward complete surrender unto him. And whenever such principles are disturbed by the demons, the Lord appears. From the Bhagavatam we understand that Lord Buddha, the incarnation of Krishna, who appeared when materialism was granted, and materialists were using a pretext of the authority of the Vedas. Although there are certain restrictive rules and regulations regarding animal sacrifice for particular purposes in the Vedas, people of demonic tendency still took to animal sacrifice without reference to the Vedic principles. Lord Buddha appears... That's why it's still uh, animal sacrifice, not only the followers of Vedas, every religion, animal is killed or sacrificed under certain religious rituals. In the lower stage, in the higher stage, there is no such animal sacrifice. Just like this Krishna consciousness movement, there is no ritualistic process uh, as animal sacrifice. But uh, the, the Vedas, they will include everyone. Suppose one is addicted to feast eating or uh, meat eating, so the Vedas uh, do not reject him also. He gives him direction that uh, you all right, you can eat meat, but not uh, you can start slaughterhouse. You can sacrifice one goat in the presence of Goddess Kali, and then you can eat. That means restriction. Goddess Kali cannot be worshipped uh, daily. So at least 
He is forbidden to eat daily meat. That is the idea. Uh, just like liquor shop is allowed by the government because there are drunkards, they must drink, but under restriction. Uh, you cannot keep uh, uh, liquor or wine more than the necessity. Uh, there is restriction. In India especially there is very uh, I mean, strict restriction. Uh, so similarly, uh, the basic principle is the restrict sense gratification under certain rules and regulations. So the animal sacrifice is also restricted in that way. But when people become too much animal eater and simply giving the evidence of Vedas, the Vedas it is sanctioned, but without caring for the ritualistic process. Uh, at that time Lord Buddha appeared. Uh, it is said about Lord Buddha that Sadaya Ridaya Dar Sita Pasu Bhatam. The Lord appeared as Lord Buddha, being compassionate on the poor animals, unrestricted. So this animal killing, no religion sanctions. In your Christian religion also, it is clearly stated, if thou shalt not kill, that who is caring for them? Nobody is caring. They are killing. Ah. Their killing process is increasing. And there is reaction also. Every ten years you will find one war killing process upon you. How you can avoid? There must be reaction. Ah. You cannot violate the laws of God, as you cannot violate the laws of state. Similarly, if you violate, you have to suffer. You cannot expect peace and you go on killing animals. That is not possible. If you want peace, then you must think for others also. That is Krishna consciousness. That is God consciousness. How you can kill another animal? He is also as good a child of God. Uh, a father has got some a uh, dozen of children. It may be one is useless, but that does not mean father will allow to be killed, allow him to be killed. If a very intelligent child says, My dear father, your this son is useless, let, let me kill him. The father will, will sanction? No. Never. Similarly, the animal may be less intelligent, they cannot make protest. Ah. They are also national. What you mean by national? One who is born in America he is national. Are the animals are not born in America? Are they not American nationals? But because they cannot make protest, they cannot make meeting, you are clearly killing them. Uh, is that humanity? And you expect peace? That is not possible. Violation of God, flaws of God. One has to suffer, today or tomorrow. Today or tomorrow, just like if you contaminate some disease germ, it may not be manifest immediately, but it will act someday. Similarly, if we contaminate sinful activities, it may not be immediately manifest, but you must wait for the reaction. So, Krishna consciousness means to understand these things. It is not a bogus propaganda that you meditate fifteen minutes and you become God, nonsense. This is not a such a moment. Ah. You have to understand your constitutional position. You have to understand what is God, what is law of God, how it is functioning. These are there, these are meant for human study. They are not meant for animals. So when there are discrepancies of this violation of law, or there is incarnation of law. So Lord Buddha appears in that way, yes. Therefore, each and every avatar or incarnation of the Lord is a particular mission 
and they are all described in the new revealed scriptures. No but can be accepted as an avatar without reference to such scriptural indications. It is not a fact that the Lord appears only on Indian soil. He can advent himself anywhere and everywhere and whenever he desires to appear. In each and every incarnation, he speaks as much about religion as can be understood by the particular people under their particular circumstances. But the mission is the same, to lead people to God consciousness and obedience to the principles of religion. Sometimes he descends personally, and sometimes he sends his bona fide representatives in the form of his son or servant. Some there are some uh, protagonists. They say that uh, God cannot come personally. Why? Why God should be restricted? Uh, is God under your regulation or restriction? Then what kind of God is? Yes. God can uh, come personally out of his compassion. Uh, that is possible, yes. And he comes. He says here in this verse that I come. But it is not that somebody will imitate and he will say that I am God. No, that also not. You have to test, actually. That test, if you have got, you are, if you are conversant, with the principles of God appearance, disappearance, incarnation, then you can understand who is a pretender and who is actually the principle of God by action. Oh. There are just like oh, Krishna is accepted as the supreme personality of God by his action, wonderful action. Uh, not that he pretended and cheated some people that I am God. Actually, uh, from the beginning of his appearance, he uh, played, uh, uh, I mean to say, uncommon activities. Just like uh, at the age of seven years old, he lifted the Govardhan field. There are so many instances, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, Life of Krishna in the tenth canto, there is description. And in the battle of Kurukhetra, the Bhagavad Gita. So by his activities, by his knowledge, by his opulence, everything is there. Uh, nobody is supposed to be cheated by a pretender if he is actually intelligent. So. The principles of the Bhagavad Gita, which spoken to Arjuna, and for that matter, to other highly elevated persons, because they were highly advanced compared to ordinary men in other parts of the world. Two plus two equals four. This is a mathematical principle, and it is true both in the infant's arithmetic class and in the master's degree class as well. Still, there are higher and lower mathematics. In all incarnations of the Lord, therefore, the same principles are taught, but they appear to be higher and lower under various circumstances. The higher principles of religion begin with the acceptance of the four orders and the four ranks of social life, as will be explained later. The whole purpose of the mission of incarnation is to arouse Krishna consciousness everywhere. 8. In order to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to reestablish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium. 9. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activity does not upon leaving the body take its birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. This is very nice. If one can understand the principles of appearance and disappearance of God, his activities, so simply by understanding these principles, he will be liberated. It is said here that after quitting this body, he is no more coming to take birth again in this material world. So, just like a layman does not know how the sun appears and disappears, 
but uh, an asnama. Uh, he knows very well the movements of the sun, moon, and other planets, appearance and disappearance. This is a sign, asnama. Similarly, there is a sign of God by which you can understand how God appears, disappears, how He acts, how He uh, works. Everything is there. But if you are not interested, that does not mean that uh, the science of God is uh, false or there is no such science. There is. You must be interested to know. Then you can understand. And if you simply understand this science, then you become liberated. We hope not. Simply by understanding, even not engaging yourself in transcendental service of the law, simply by understanding the process of appearance and disappearance. So why don't you try that? Go on. Perfect. Perfect. The Lord's descent from his transcendental abode is already explained in the sixth verse. One who can understand the truth of the appearance of the personality of God is is already liberated from material bondage, and therefore he returns to the kingdom of God immediately after quitting his present material body. Thus liberation of the living entity from material bondage is not at all easy. The impersonalist and the yogi attain liberation only after much trouble and many, many births. Even then, the liberation is... Try to understand bondage. What is bondage? We are thinking we are very free. We are free. We are declaring that we belong to the free nation or free community. Or everyone is seeking after freedom. But nobody is free. Oh. Nobody is free. Everyone is under the stringent laws of nation. Oh. So bondage means to remain under the condition of material laws. That is called bondage. Oh. That's like people are trying for so many years to go to the moon planet. Uh, the Russian and the American scientists are competing. Uh, but they are so bound up that go some say thousands and thousands of miles up again come back. Just see how they are bound up. You cannot go. Uh, uh, so, this is the nearest planet, and there are so many other planets also. So you cannot go by your wings or by your will. This is called bondage. But if you become free when you are uh, in spiritual understanding, uh, then you are free, then you can travel anywhere. The perfect yogi, uh, Right. He can travel in any planet. Oh. That is freedom. That is little freedom. We have no idea what is the free freedom of the spirit soul that we have forgotten. Because for uh, from time immemorial we have been bound up under the laws of material nature. So we do not know what is freedom. But there are information of the freedom how a spirit soul can become free uh, wrong. The impersonal and the yogi attain liberation only after much trouble and many, many births. Even then, the liberation they achieve, merging into the impersonal brahman yogi, the closest of the Lord, is only partial, and there is the risk of returning again to this material world. But the devotee, simply by understanding the transcendental nature of the body and the activities of the Lord, attains the abode of the Lord after any of this body, and does not and does not run the risk of returning again to this material world. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that the Lord has many, many forms and incarnations. Advaita, Kutya, Nanta, Rupam. Although there are many transcendental forms of the Lord, they are still one and the same supreme personality of God. One has to understand this fact with conviction, although it is incomprehensible to mundane scholars and empiric philosophers. 
Yes, this is very important point. The process of understanding knowledge. Oh, the modern tendency is to understand uh, by uh, dint of one sense perception. That is not possible. Oh. There are uh, many things, especially spiritual matter. Nobody can understand by simple speculation. So one has to accept the authority. Uh, so according to Vedic culture, the Vedas are the authority. If there is some information in the Vedas, you accept it. Uh, authority. That is very nice system. That's like a child. Uh, if he wants to understand something uh, out of his own intelligence, it is very difficult to understand. But if he asks his parents, uh, Mother, what is this? Uh, mother says, My dear child, this is this. So he understands immediately. Uh, because mother is authority. Mother will not teach the child. Uh, similarly, those who are liberated persons, uh, Vedas means the knowledge given by the liberated person, by God. So if you accept it, then you get the knowledge immediately. You haven't got to make research or philosophical speculation. That process is a uh, deductive process. Uh, that process is very nice. So basic process means, as it is uh, stated in the fourth chapter, it is uh, that, evam param prasasam, by disciple succession, if you uh, try to understand the truth, then you get infallible knowledge. Uh, your purpose is to get knowledge. As soon as you get the knowledge from authority, your knowledge is perfect. But if you want to get the knowledge by your own uh, sense perception, you will never be able to come to the right conclusion, neither it is possible to get uh, knowledge in that process. Go on. The Vedic version, Tatsana C, is actually applied in this case. Anyone who understands Lord Krishna to be the Supreme, or who says unto the Lord, You are the same Supreme Brahman, the personality of God, is certainly liberated instantly, and consequently his entrance into the transcendental association of the Lord is guaranteed. In other words, such a faithful devotee of the Lord attains perfection, and this is confirmed by the following Vedic assertion. Vam leva vidhi pa atim ritam iti nanya pata vidyate anyan anyanaya. One can attain the perfect stage of liberation from birth and death simply by knowing the Lord, the Supreme Personality of God. There is no alternative, there is no alternative means, because anyone who does not understand Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God is, is surely in the mode of ignorance. Consequently, he will not attain salvation simply, so to speak, by licking the outer surface of the bottle of honey or by interpreting the text of the Bhagavad Gita according to his own mundane scholarship. Such impaired philosophers may assume very important roles in the material world, but they are not necessarily eligible for liberation. Such puffed up mundane scholars have to wait for the call of the mercy of the devotee of the Lord. One should therefore accept the principle of Krishna consciousness with faith and knowledge, and in this way one can attain the perfection of life. 
intent. Being free from attachment, fear, and anger. Being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me. Many, many persons in the past became purified and thus they all attained transcendental love in me. Therefore, as described above, it is very difficult for a person who is too materially affected to understand the personal nature of the Supreme Absolute Truth. <coughs> Generally, people who are attached to the bodily concept of life are so absorbed in materialism that it is almost impossible for them to understand how the Supreme can be a person. Such materialists cannot even imagine that there is a transcendental body which is non-perishable, full of knowledge and eternally blissful. In the materialistic concept, the body is perishable, full of ignorance and completely invisible. Therefore, people in general keep the same bodily idea in mind when they are informed of the personal form of the Lord. Yes. Uh, when we uh, try to impress people about the personal nature, uh, the personal body of God, uh, generally we think uh, God is a person like me. Uh, therefore, uh, they cannot imagine how God, actually God is not a person like me, but he is a person. That is to be understood. Satchidananda Vigra. Uh, he has got body, but he hasn't got body like me. Just like in the uh, Vedas, it is stated, Apani Pada Javanagrihita. Uh, in the Upanishad it is said, the God has no leg, but he can run faster than any one of us. Now, this is superficially contradiction. If he has no leg, then how he can run faster than me? So, the adjustment is that he has got led because he runs. Uh, just like in another place, the God has no hand, but he can accept whatever you offer. Uh, there are many such Vedic verses. Now we have to understand in this way that he has got his hand, he has got his leg, but not this limited hand and limited leg. In another place in Bhagavad Gita you find God says that uh, whatever is offered to me in the group of flowers, fruits, vegetables, I accept for eating. Now, if we think that God is far, far away, how he eats, I offer here, how he eats. That means his eating process is different. Ah, he can eat even from millions and millions of miles away. Ah, so these things have to be understood. The God, God has got a form, but that form is not exactly our form. If we try to understand God's form uh, as limited as our form, then we will misunderstand. Uh, in the Brahma Sangita it says, Satsidananda Vidra. His form is uh, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. Just exactly opposite to this form which we have got just now. We can also attain that form. Uh, that is being explained here. Therefore, people in general keep the same bodily idea in mind when they are informed of the personal nature of the Lord. For such materialistic men, the form of the gigantic material manifestation is supreme. Therefore, they imagine that the supreme is impersonal. And because they are too materially absorbed, the concept of retaining the personality after liberation from matter frightens them. When such materialistic men are informed that spiritual life is also individual and personal, they are afraid of becoming persons again, and so they naturally prefer a kind of immersion into the impersonal void. Generally, they compare the living entity to the bubbles of the ocean which merge into the ocean. That is the highest perception of spiritual existence attainable without individual personality. 
This is a fearful stage of life, devoid of perfect knowledge of spiritual existence. Furthermore, there are many persons who cannot understand spiritual existence at all, being embarrassed by so many theories and by contradictions of various types of philosophical speculation. They become disgusted or angry, and foolishly they conclude that there is no supreme cause and that everything is ultimately void. Such people are in diseased conditions of life. Some of them are too materially attacked and therefore do not give attention to spiritual life. Some of them want to merge into the supreme spiritual cause, and some of them disbelieve in everything, being angry at all sorts of spiritual speculation out of hopelessness. This last class of men take to the shelter some kind of intoxication, and their effective hallucinations are sometimes accepted as spiritual business. One has to get rid of all three stages of attachment to the material world. The negligence of, the, of spiritual life, fear of spiritual personal identity, and the concept of void that underlies the frustration of life. The free of, to get free of these three stages in the material concept of life, one has to take complete shelter of the Lord, guided by the bona fide spiritual master, and follow the penances of disciplinary and regular principles of devotional life. The last stage of such devotional life is called Baba, or transcendental love of God is. According to Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the science of devotional service, in the beginning one must have a preliminary desire for self-realization. This will bring one to the stage of trying to associate with persons who are spiritually elevated the next stage is that one becomes initiated by an elevated spiritual master, and under the instruction of the spiritual master, the neophyte devotee begins the process of devotional service. By execution of devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual master, one becomes free from all material attachment and attains steadiness in self-realization and acquires a taste for hearing about the absolute personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. This taste leads one further forward to the attachment for Krishna, the attachment for Krishna consciousness. And this Krishna consciousness is matured in Baba, or the preliminary stage of transcendental love of Godhead. When the devotee reaches the stage of real love for Godhead, it is called Prima, the highest perfection of life. In the Prima stage, there is a constant engagement in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So, by the slow process of devotional service, under the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master, one can attain the father's stage, being free from all material attacks, from the fearfulness of one's individual spiritual personality, and from the frustration of voice. And when one is actually free from such low stages of life, one can attain to the abode of the supreme personality of God. That's We discussed Bhagavad Gita. If somebody has got any difficulty to understand or any question, they can uh, he can clear it up. Uh, this class is meant for understand. So uh, we should try to understand clearly what is discussed. So if there is any question, you can post. Sadviddhi pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya. Spiritual understanding is uh, possible by surrender, uh, 
by coast and by service. The coast and should be made to a person where you can surrender. And that person where you surrender must be rendered service. This is the process. You, you cannot, we cannot deny the Vedic version. Tattamasi is a Vedic version. So either you are Mayabadi or Vaishnava, you cannot deny it. Just like two lawyers are arguing in the court, the medium is the law court. So neither of them can deny the law court. But one has to establish his conviction by argument, by logic. So similarly, Tattvamasi is the code of Vedic principle, Vedas. You are that. Tattvamasi. Tat means that Supreme Spirit. You are. So, our philosophy, Vaishnava philosophy, we begin from this point, just Krishna began, began Bhagavad Gita from the point that you are not this body. We begin from this version, Sattvamasi. Sattvamasi, you are not this, that means what I am. Then I must be something, otherwise, what is my identity? And that replies, your identity is that you are as good as God. That means you, you are qualitatively the same. Sattvamas. Oh. Qualitatively, you are, the, the mistake of the Mahabharata philosophy is that you are the same. You are the same in which way? I am the same in quality, not in quantity. Just like if I say, you are as good as President Nixon. Oh, there is nothing wrong because you are American, he is American. Is there anything wrong? From the point of view, American citizenship, you are as good as President Nixon. But when you go deep into the matter, you will find oh, you are far, far away from President Nixon. Similarly, we are identifying ourselves with this matter. But Vedic Vira says that you are not matter, you are supreme, spirit soul. Not supreme, you are spirit soul. That understanding is Tattamasa. You have to understand, Aham Brahmasma. I am Brahma, I am not matter. Our disease is that I am identifying with this matter. I am the, this material body which is foreign to me. This is the beginning of the, uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita instruction that you are not this body. Tattvamas, you are spirit, so. Uh, so we also we have to accept, we are accepting that I am not this body. I am spirit, so. Uh, but my constitutional position is part and parcel of the Supreme Whole. So, just like big gold mine and a small particle of gold, that small particle of gold is also gold. But that does not mean it has the same value as the gold mine. Sattamas. Just like a drop of sea water. Chemical composition is the same. Salty taste is the same. 
Similarly, if you can't understand yourself, then you can understand even God. Uh, if you study yourself, that although I am very small, what to speak of myself, even a small ant, it has got individual. The ant is going on, you stop it, it will struggle. That means it wants to keep its individual. Therefore, if you are the same, then God is also individual. Is not impersonal. Immediately you can understand. How you can? I have got so much. I am so small, tiny. It's still I have got my individuality, personality. And how God can be impersonal? In the common sense, man can understand. Uh, if I have got tendency to uh, love. Ah, nice girls and dance with uh, her or a girl. Everyone is individual. Why God shall not? He must have that tendency. Otherwise, where from this tendency comes? Because I am part and parcel of God. Unless the tendency is there, where from I get this tendency? See, if you simply try to understand the Tattvasi, you can easily understand your position and God. It's so nice. Huh? So Ananda Maya Bhyasa. Huh? Ananda Maya Bhyasa. The baby person says, Vedanta, that uh, a spirit soul is by nature joyful. Therefore, we are spirit soul. We are hankering after joy. Where there is dance, where there is cinema, where there is nice food, where there is nice song, nice picture, nice beautiful woman and man, everyone is searching after joy. Therefore the Supreme must be joyful. But I am conditioned, therefore my joy is being checked up. But he is not conditioned. His joy is unlimited. He is everlastingly in enjoyment in Vrindavan, dancing with Gopi. So you simply study this Sattva so you can understand yourself and God. If you are philosopher, if you are thoughtful, this Sattva is so nice. But if you simply become more this fool, Oh, I am God, so I have nothing to do. I have become God. I have no sin, I have no yes. meditation. Yes. This is another foolishness. Just try to understand. You are the same. That's nice. But why your process of enjoyment is checked? You want unchecked happiness. You do not wish to die. Why death overcomes you? We are sitting here very peacefully. If, if there is any information, oh, the ceiling is going to fall down, oh, we shall immediately better to slow because we are afraid of death. That means I want eternal life, but death is there. These questions should be answered. Why I am subject to death? Why I am subjected to birth? Why I am subjected to disease? Old age? This is called Brahma Jignasa, Athata Brahma Jignasa. This is called inquiry, real inquiry. Uh, that is human life, life's inquiry. The beast, the birds, the animals, they cannot inquire this thing. They are suffering. But they cannot inquire why I am suffering. Here is an opportunity. Here you can understand that I am as good as God, although I am very small. Then you can prepare yourself. Sattvamas. You are the same. You can also join with Krishna and dance with Him. Why you are forgetting that? But you have to qualify yourself. You can, cannot dance with the dog and God at the same time. 
If you want to dance with the dog, then remain here. Go on particularly dancing with the dog. But if you want to dance with God, you can prepare yourself and go there and dance with Him. That is up to you, because Sattvamati, you are the same. That everything is mine, choice. What I want to do? Oh. In the practical life also. Oh. President Nixon is the head of your state. You can also become. But you must have the capacity. Simply by thinking that I am President Nixon, Nixon, Nixon. That will not do. Sattamasi means that. He has got the same quality as God. Now you have to realize and you have to act. Don't misuse your life simply in animal propensities and go to God. No. Therefore, bathing us. Tamasi ma jyotis gama. Don't remain in the darkness. Come out to the light. Tamasi ma jyotis gama. Don't remain in birth and death cycle. Come to the eternal life. Everything is there. You can have eternal life, blissful life, life of knowledge. So this Krishna consciousness means training people for becoming fit to enter into that eternal life, blissful life. That training is meant for human beings, not for anyone. So you should not misuse this human form of life. Try to understand Sattvamasi and act accordingly. That will be successful of our activity. Is that clear? Yeah, question? He have also guarantee. He have also guarantee. Those who are in Krishna consciousness, uh, seriously, even they uh, do not make perfection, generally you can make perfection. It is not very difficult. Krishna consciousness, you have to keep your consciousness always absorbed in the thought of Krishna. Our consciousness must be absorbed in some thought. Without thought, your consciousness uh, is not uh, existing. There must be some thought. Now, you have to replace that thought with Krishna. That's all. You have to mold your life in such a way that you cannot think of uh, uh, anything uh, except Krishna. Uh, this our arrangement, uh, the chanting, the dancing, or uh, reading this Krishna conscious book, what, is, what does it mean? That we always try to be absorbed in Krishna consciousness. So if you remain always absorbed, this is called samadhi. If you remain absorbed in Krishna consciousness, then Krishna says that uh, hmm. uh, next life you go directly there. Is that guarantee? Then, uh, if you say that it may be that I cannot fulfill uh, ten percent Krishna consciousness in this life, then that is also guarantee. What is that guarantee? Krishna says, that 
सृजनांग सिमतांग ही जोग भ्रष्ट संज्ञान जोग भ्रष्ट दोस हु कैनॉट फुलफिल द होल प्रोग्राम ऑफ कृष्ण कॉन्सियसनेस पैसा मारा है फॉल्स काम इनकॉम्प्लीट तो कृष्ण से सच पर्सन आर गिविंग चांस टू टेक बर्थ इन द नेक्स्ट लाइफ इन रीच फैमिली एंड इन प्योर ब्राह्मण फैमिली so that means your human life is guaranteed it is family does not mean animal family it is mean human being and brahmins mean intelligent class of man so you get your birth in a family where your parents are very intelligent very advanced in philosophical knowledge in krishna consciousness you get chance uh Uh, from our practical experience, we can say we got this chance. We got this chance. Uh, we got very nice parents, and and I was born in a family, uh, a very pure family. And of course, in those days, we were rich also. We had Radha Krishna. मूर्ति सेवा तो फ्रॉम द चाइल्डहुड आई वॉज टॉट नॉट टॉट आई आस्क माई फादर गिव मी दिज राधा कृष्ण मूर्ति आई सल वर्स फादर इन कैन मी आई वॉज पार्ट फॉर मी दिस रॉफेज ऑफ ट्रा फेस्टिवल माई फादर इन कैन सो दिस मीन्स दैट आई गॉट दिस चांस अगेन So, those who are executing Krishna consciousness, they are not in loss. Whatever they are doing, they are gaining some. Gaining one percent, two percent, three percent, five percent, ninety-nine percent. If it is full, be ten percent. Then it is perfect. But even if it is not ten percent, you are not in a loss because you get good chance to so, make further advance. These things are discussed in the sixth chapter. You will find so there is guarantee. So try your best to execute Krishna consciousness fully. Uh, that should be the motto of our life.